Hi everybody, I'd like to just put together this short video to uh, illustrate some of the topics we covered in Chapter 10 as a brief wrap-up. We had uh, class interrupted last week and I'd like to finish off Chapter 10 and move into Chapter 11 when we start up again. The topic of Chapter 10 was modular programming using subroutines and functions. So we want to break down larger problems into smaller ones. A function should be used to return a value, and a subroutine should do something like process data, get input, or display output. You can see in this example where we use module level variables to send information to different subroutines. I have a main subroutine that calls two other subroutines, and I also have indicated a private subroutine, which means it wouldn't be available on the Alt F8 list and could not be run anywhere else except from within this module. The subroutine initialize sets the variables that we need and then the subroutine called display welcome gets called by the main subroutine and will display those values. If you create a public function, it becomes available for use in subroutines and also on any worksheet. So you can see in this example with my public function circle area, not only can I call it from a subroutine in VBA, but I can also call it from a worksheet using a normal function call as is typically done in Excel. These are called user-defined functions. The chapter also talks about scope because we can declare variables outside of a subroutine at the module level so that they could, if they were public variables, be accessible to any module or if we declare them as private or if we don't declare them at all other than indicating with the keyword dim, then they're private and are only accessible within the current module. So they would be module level variables. In this example I have three variables, two of them were private and one is public. Passing arguments is an alternative to using global variables or some people would consider a module level variable being global. If you declare a variable public then it's global. So you can see in this example where I have a subroutine which will call a subroutine called display name which I've made private so if I try to run any of these macros, I'll only see the subroutine called passing argument example, and it will display the, it will call the display name subroutine, and it passes in two arguments, the last name and the first name, every time the subroutine goes through the loop. So it simply sends the values to a, uh, so it simply sends the arguments to the subroutine, and the subroutine has to declare in its heading that it's going to accept those two, sub, those two uh, arguments. The chapter in the textbook, if you have the third edition, it says that this uh, topic is optional, but it, by fourth edition he takes out the optional part. So by reference is uh, the default way of passing variables within uh, VBA, but you could also pass variables by value. And it is interesting to note that if you move on to programming in Visual Basic.net or Visual Basic 2000, or Visual Basic 2010 rather and uh, higher, or 2011 and 2012, then the default values are passed uh, by value instead of by reference. So that comes into consideration. The function that I've displayed here, I actually do pass in values by, uh, I do pass arguments by value. And you can see that this is a private function that would return a string of the first and last name concatenated together with a space in between them. Using by value as the method of passing arguments will guarantee that this function will, cannot change the first name and the last name arguments. And in this case, it doesn't attempt to change them. It simply concatenates them together and explains and returns that back out to the calling subroutine. We didn't get a chance to really look at examine the functions uh, .xlsm file from chapter 10. I would encourage you to do that. It's got some great applications, especially if you're going to be working with random numbers, which is very important for any kind of uh, modeling or financial analysis. So important to use application.volatile when you want to generate random numbers on a spreadsheet that will recalculate every time something changes, or uh, if you press F9, that will recalculate the spreadsheet for you and then you can use the randomize function to ensure that you'll get a different random number every time you run your subroutine or each time it generates a new number. Finally, in the last part of this chapter, it talks about an event handler and event handlers are going to be the chapter of the topic of chapter 11 and specifically if you are working in a workbook and you want to have code 
executed as soon as the workbook opens. And one of those things typically used in the examples from the textbook are that it displays the explanation worksheet by making it active, which you can see in this subroutine uh, in this code here. Now, you can't write the name of this subroutine. You have to uh, simply go into the this workbook object instead of the module, and you can choose the different events, and you'll find that one of the events is the open event. And if you choose the open event, then it will automatically insert this subroutine heading for you. And then you just add the code that you need to have executed. However, remember that the code will not execute until the user who opens your file enables the macros. So they have to click on the enable content button before this would actually work. So if your user ignores the enable content, then it will not activate the worksheet that you indicate, or will it run any other macros that you have intended.